Happy Hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy Hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street where they have a happy hour here every day for four hours. From three to seven, we can get half price drinks and half price bar food, and they have an awesome brunch on the weekends, happy hour. And uh, Wayfair is just uh, on Ferret Street, just a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue. And happy hour today is brought to us by Strategic Resumes. If you want to sharpen up your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or other job search skills, start at Strategic Resumes. And if you want to get away, on vacation, start your search at Travel Central in Metairie. Basic Swim and Gym, where you can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, which is right next to Basics underneath the lingerie store on Magazine Street. Hangover Destroyer is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. And thanks to the Positive Vibrations Foundation, who are creating and encouraging community through the development and preservation of arts, music, culture, and heritage, and who doesn't support that? And if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour, and you too can be a member of our Happy Hour family for just $1 a month. And sorry to tell you, Andrew Duhon is not here today. Sad, right? (laughs) But you can buy his record or even steal it anywhere you steal music. It's called False River. It's an awesome record and highly recommended. And talking of music, look who's come back. It's Cole Williams. I'm back. Hey, Cole. Nice hey. to see you. How are you? Oh, my God. I'm it's great. A leading question. Now, can any of the I'm other the guys around this table smell Cole? Or is it just me? Uh, yeah, yes, I can. You smell awesome. What is the smell? Yes. This is it's like cocoa butter or something. Cocoa butter. Everybody Everybody does come over here. I said it was cloves. Different. Yeah. Danita, what do you think it is? Can you smell it? It's my there? oils. It's oil. It's a special. It's a special. I think I'll have to get closer to her. <laughs> come over and it's have a special a, come combination. Over and have a, a lady never tells you. Can take your headphones off if you want. Oh, right. It's worth it. I would like to know what you. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's getting real. Yeah. <laughs> See what you think. And if five minutes have not passed. Yeah. I, I love the direction yeah. the show's going. Already. Mm. We're playing a game today what called "What Do like? I Smell Like." I smell delicious. 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 Look at that. You, you two look like a good couple as well. <laughs> so that, look delicious. at that. Beautiful. Ah, oh, she. Isn't, she does hair. Like she's, I know. She's Danita, amazing hair. D- Danita oh, and Miller. I aspire to like. <laughs> Danita, am I calling you Danita Miller or Danita Sather or well, Sather or what is it? Actually, uh, Miller was my maiden name. Yeah. Mm. Miller makes it right. It's Miller but time. It's Miller Doesn't make time. it wrong. Miller, the <laughs> high life. Um, okay. But I go by Sather because my children's last name is Sather. You change your name for your children? Well, that was their was father's, that their father's name. name. Are you still married to him? No. Oh, so so should I go back to Miller? I, what, what do you What do you think? Hmm. My mother kept her last name. Danita Miller. She kept her married last name. I like Danita Miller as a I name. I would keep the... But actually, I kind of like your your. I like that. Danita like Sather. Yeah, I like that Sather. No, you I do? don't like Sather. Yes. Okay. Hey, Chef Marlon Alexander is here. Chef, how's yes. it going? Hello. Everything's going great. I, I I'm honored, and thank you for inviting me. Not at all. I see you took your hat off. I took my hat off at the yes. end of the day. Okay. okay. All right. Hair. I'm, a, I'm a big I'm a big hat guy. I, I, it's <laughs> yeah. It looks good on you. That people probably think I'm bald. I don't know. Where do you buy your hats? Yes. What's it called? Gordon's. Yes. Oh, but, Gordon's but, is Gordon's. awesome. Right. Yes. But I mean, to be honest with you, when, when I travel around, I'll buy a hat like in the most random spot. So if it looks good, I'll take it. Okay. Where have you been recently where you bought a hat? Uh, Portugal. Oh, Portugal. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. So, fancy. yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I haven't paid for any trips in a very long time. Did you bring us back anything from Portugal? Uh, uh, I brought a lot of uh, port wine, and um, oddly enough, I went to this great bar there called um, uh, The Bedroom, and it was owned by John Malkovich. <laughs> and I worked with him. He's there, awesome. There were beds. Hang on. John Malkovich owns a bar in Portugal, in, Portugal. in Lisbon. In Lisbon. Called the bedroom, right by the water. Okay, well, they've got another and hour. And it's called the bedroom, right. and it's beds that are covered in plastic, and it's everywhere around. That's what you sit on. You sit on a bed covered in plastic. I've been many places. I wasn't sure what was going on. It's like your grandmother's couch. Right. Like yeah. Right. The are you supposed to have <laughs> sex on it? Uh, you know, I'm sure it's don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> what, what's, the what's the last hole? What's yeah, the yeah, lighting right. like oh in there? God. Is it bright light? It's well, no. It's actually like candles everywhere, randomly placed around. So it's oh. very, it's it's very relaxing, soothing. That's dirty. Why would you? 
cover it with plastic unless you expect him to get oh my God. bodily fluids on it. That would... Did you have a good time there? Yeah, yeah. What uh, made you think of that when I said, did you bring anything back? Did you catch something? No. <laughs> Thank God, no. But, All right. but yeah, it was a great time. They would probably use plastic to cover everything. You, you know. were th- everything. Yeah. Don't, you don't know. touch anything. So, okay, so what, what, uh, what is John Malkovich? So you work with John Malkovich. I have. What yes. did you work on? It was a little show called Supercon, and it was supposed to be a comedy about um, Comic Con. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea for mm-hmm. a comedy, actually. And, and, was he uh, any good in it? I, yes, he was probably the best thing in it. You know, he's Listen. really, um, he's a very sophisticated person. Right. I wouldn't think yes. he would do some sort of dopey comedy. I know. I was wondering myself. Yeah. But he was good. <laughs> but he was good. So and you, he allowed me to put a toupee on him because he shaves his head. So you're the hair and makeup person. I'm the hair person. Right. And I Not makeup. kept a toupee on him. He shaves his head. Wow. So people What's put a toupee. Pay on. What? So you're saying he shaves his head so people put up toupee no, on? No, he shaves his head because he likes to. He's very handsome with a shaved head. <laughs> what are you suggesting? Well, that he's really. Oh, here oh. it is. <laughs> right? Ooh, wow. That's the toupee right there. So That's you're it. Oh, my God. Wow. How'd you get that so fast? Well, he's looking a lot older than I wow. remember. Yes. <laughs> Especially with that toupee. Right. Funny. Mm-hmm. He looks better without it. <laughs> and it was kind I of a pink so. hair color, you know, it was kind of like the strawberry. So pink hair and makeup wand. is not necessarily together on a movie. Uh, well, it's, um, it's, it's not because of our union situations. Uh, I'm part of 798 IATSE. And um, it's, it's your either hair or your makeup. And I had to make that decision. When I joined the union in 2004. Which one did you go with? Hair, obviously. I went with hair. And could you have just as easily been a makeup artist? Yes, Are I could Are you qualified have. to do that? I am qualified. How I did you did make it for that decision? 15 years. I did it because there were less hairdressers than there were makeup artists. So that meant ah. I'd be in more demand. Smart. Oh, yeah. So you weren't following like your picking. heart so much as following the money. I love doing both. <laughs> okay. I love doing both. But you're not allowed to here. Do you regret... Every day that now you're not doing makeup. Not at Some all. <laughs> I still get to do makeup. I go on. I do commercials, and you can do both. Oh, so there's no union for commercials? Not really. Well, not one that it? they is don't that enforce. Hmm? Is that after or no? No, IATSE. IATSE. Okay. After is for actors. Uh, ah. Now, what about you, Chef Marlon? Are you the, a member of a union? Uh, is there a yes. chef association? There, there, there is a chef association, and I'm a member of that. Private chefs also. I mean, I just uh, I just moved here um, in February, one day before Mardi Gras this year. Oh my God. So I, I've been what? working, working, working because uh, I've got all this information about you here, and I was that was going to be a question I was going to ask you. So you know, I might as well ask you right now. Why the hell did you move here? Of all these exotic so, places you've lived and I'm a, things you've done. Originally from California. Uh, well, sorry. That's a lie. I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I moved to California when I was uh, very young. So uh, I consider myself like like I'm in California, you know, Long Beach, California, I grew up. Uh, But when I was working for a hedge fund owner in Greenwich, Connecticut. As a chef, as a private chef. uh, Yes, as a private chef. Um, So I was there for four years. I didn't want to go back to California. uh, And so I came down here for a bachelor party. (laughs) <laughs> so basically, it's one night in New Orleans. Are you single? I am. Well, no, I'm seeing someone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just check. Was that someone who popped out of the cake at the Re- bachelor party? Recently divorced <sighs> and seeing someone. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Life is good. Uh. <laughs> but if you look at this list of exotic, incredible, interesting people you've worked for. Yeah, I want to hear. Should we r- try to run good. through the whole thing? Th- through the resume? Go for it. I mean, have you really w- cooked for Stevie Wonder? Yes. Kiss? Yes. Eddie Murphy? Yes. Will and Jada Pinkett Smith? Yes. Christina Aguilera? Yes. And it goes on and on. No, 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 no. Fav- fa- favorite person who you actually sound like that I'm shocked you didn't mention, Rod Stewart, who would sing for me <gasps> as I made him lunch before he hopped on the plane to go to Vegas to perform. He would sing to me at the island. So it's like he had everywhere to, to be in this house, this big, beautiful house in uh, Beverly Hills. But he would hang out in the kitchen and, like, talk to me and sing. Wow. Can you? So and he so paid me special. at that. That's even <laughs> so better. That's I know, thing. right? You're a chef to the stars right. here, which must mean that people who can hire anyone 
decided to hire you. So you must be a pretty good chef. So I, I do a lot with nutrition. So um, I'm very like healthy, uh, or all everything's you always look healthy. All, uh, yeah. Wouldn't you say <laughs> everything is always. Pretty Everything's healthy. always organic. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so it's, you know, um, I help people, you know, with body image. So I worked uh, a year with Christina Aguilera. I helped She's her, got a bad I helped body her lose, image. I helped her lose that 36 pounds, and it was not easy. Oh, my Love God. Love you, Christina. Uh, I need to but, lose yeah. 36 pounds. Oh, Do you? The tea. <laughs> but she was working out, I'm too, right? I'm bringing receipts. No. <laughs> she was working out, too, though, right? Oh. <gasps> Did you put her in the master cleanse? Because that's well, what they you, do when you know they want to get into that dress really quickly. Oh yeah, uh, the master it's cleanse great. is great, the, but a lot of times, a lot of times it's just you know you have to really grains and all these things like no starch, mm-hmm. no bread, yeah. that, those kinds of things. I'm gluten free. No bread. I have a gluten allergy. I'm, but yeah. Yeah. I'm gluten free too, but I still eat tons of gluten free bread. See, the, you, <laughs> see you, there's more chemicals in like the gluten free stuff. Like you have to, like, right. you have to read the labels. It's like <sighs> piles and piles of like. All this other stuff. Right. I didn't realize. I took advantage of like being gluten free to just like not have that starch mm. because like I love sugar, so like I'll get it in I my alcohol. So then it's like I just didn't want like the double sugar with like right. the breads and then the, the sugar. If you Sweet. drink tangerine tonic, cut down on the tonic. <laughs> the, the gin's fine. So you decided <laughs> to keep drinking booze but cut out bread. I think I'm yeah, good you, it's, it's about so balance. I, see, I can see why you moved to New Orleans as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't I fit right in? So you My mother, Brooklyn. she called me like a bibber. Like in Jamaica, they, they call you like a wine bibber. Like if you love bibber. alcohol, bibber. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like imbibing? I'm a, I'm a bibber. Bibber. I don't know. But like I've always liked the taste of alcohol. Like I had my well, first doesn't? Guinness. I tasted it when I was like 12. You know, it's, I don't know. Where did you grow it's up exciting. in Jamaica or in Brooklyn? I grew up in Brooklyn, but in the Caribbean neighborhood. So I'm first generation American. So my so mom is mom, from Jamaica. Right. She came here, met my father, married him, had me. Okay. And then poof. You had brothers and sisters? Nope. That's it. You were it's the only me. thing they ever got around to doing. Oh, I was an only child, too. Really? Mm-hmm. Did you, you like it? Are you still an only child? Uh, actually, I am. Do you like it? I'm an orphan. <laughs> only child. <laughs> okay. So how many kids do you have? I have two. And, where and that was important to me. Yeah. One is here, and the other one is in New York, Brooklyn. And what are, they, Brooklyn. what are they doing? And they're in Brooklyn. Yeah, so we should have switched. Um, my son just moved. Uh, he was in Prospect Park. Yeah. Well, then I love he, that area. Yeah, really nice. And, but now he's in another, and I can't quite remember. Oh, wait. Williamsburg? Bushwick? Bedside. Bushwick. He's in Ooh. Bushwick. Bushwick used Bushwick. to be like the place you wouldn't want to exactly. live under any right, circumstances. Right, but now it's now so it's cool. cool. They have all those murals everywhere. Very cool. I haven't been there in a while. That's so cool. I was there last year. Wow. It's changed, actually. It's Everybody's awesome. getting it's priced changed. out. Isn't people getting priced out of there by now? Yeah, yeah, starting to be. Did My mom get... still has a place there. She still has her house right. in East Flatbush. But, yeah, it's uh-huh. totally expensive. Yeah. It's just too expensive. It's like if you know what you used to pay for rent, why would you pay more right. when well, you knew that well, you paid at less? At this point, Brownstone and Harlem is going for millions of dollars. Right. So, yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a hipster mm-hmm. overtake. Right. Yeah. Well, Marlon, where are you living mm-hmm. here? Have you bought some sort of hipster joint? Not yet. Um, so I just... Just opened up. We have uh, a catering company, Manger. We have Poulet, which is a, like a healthier concept, uh, rotisserie chicken, so sandwiches and wraps and all those good things. And now Crew, which is my raw bar. So Jeez, you've got what going on for I, six I, months I'm, or whatever. I'm not like. home much. He's not from here. I'm not home much, <laughs> and uh, I'm actually contemplating uh, expanding Crew to uh, North Carolina. Okay. Well, let's wow. go through these one at a time. Crew is spelled C R U, I assume. C R U. Okay. Uh, Nola dot com. Crew Nola. Okay. How come uh, I don't have I, any I gotta, of this? I, I give plugs whenever I can. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. Well, C R U. It's good to know. If it's in Nola dot com, uh, and then Poule. Uh, How do you spell that? Sorry, P O U L. E T. So that's French for chicken. Right, exactly. And then crew is raw, raw fish. I assume. Exactly. So it's a raw bar. So you've got fish and chicken taken care of. One, right. What's the other one, so, mange. It's um, more of a general. Eating. Exactly. But we don't eat raw chicken. But 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 well, we don't do raw chicken. But we also don't overcook the chicken. Don't we? Right on. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so it's like I'm educating as well, uh, keeping everything very healthy. But we, I'm telling you right now, we're one of the only raw bars in town mm-hmm. that has six varieties of oysters at all. Time. We always have local. What? 
but we have, you know, everywhere. I'm I mean, it's we're all over the spectrum. Get out of my head. Where do we find uh, crew? So crew, crew and Manje are located uh, at the Pythian Market. Ah. Uh, and that's uh, 234 Loyola. Yeah, that's here in the food court. Then. Yes. That is um, a super cool place. Right. Have you guys been there yet? Not yet. Yeah. You've, got, really cool. you've got to come I've down. I've heard yes, something yeah. about it recently. Uh, you know, it's the food hall for all, and mm-hmm. it has everything. I mean, great pizza, and, wow. you know, beignets, yeah, and, sure. and, you know, all those good things. Man. Wow. So you just, wait. Wait. You just got here at the right time. You just came to New Orleans for a bachelor party. I came for a bachelor party, had a drink, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm opening three just, businesses. She just, she just started. So Crunol and then Pule, is that at the Pythian as well? Uh, yes, so you have two things at the Pythian. Two, two things under the same roof, which is great, but now uh, Crew is it's becoming a beast and its own entity. So and, I assume uh, that you're not actually down there at the Pythian market behind the counter oh, making oh, yes, food. I, oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, oh yes. Okay. I have a question I, I, for I Chef love, Marlon. I'd love to engage. Yes, go ahead. So it's, it's folk knowledge here that they say don't eat oysters in months that don't have R in them. And you know why that is? Why is that? Well, hold on. I'm glad you asked. So, <laughs> refrigeration. So, you know, here it gets very warm in August. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's, that's fine. And, but we still have locals in those months. And people come in all the time to order them. But I will say this, that, uh, you know, f- from Canada and Seattle and all these great places that we get oysters in, uh, you know, they're, it's so much flavor. And, you know, the texture and, you know, you you got to come down and try it. Do you eat Got oysters, Cole? I love oysters. You do? Yeah, can you tell the difference between a Canadian oyster and a local no, oyster? No, I don't know that. Kind of stuff. Do you I don't know if it tastes good. I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> I you, can tell anyone an can. Uh, Apalachicola oyster from a New Orleans oyster. Oh. You can. Apalachicola. Yeah. You'll okay. love it. And we have a They're fried smaller. We have a fried oyster as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and I try to put a different spin on it. So it's truffle mayo, fried mm-hmm. oyster, tuna tartare, and a black pepper caviar. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I am so sounds, there. I don't even like oysters in that I think I'll go there right after <laughs> here. We're going there together. <laughs> can you make the same kind of money here that you would make cooking for Christina Aguilera? Are you going to be happy doing this? Shocking. Uh, so, you know, not, I won't say names, but uh, so I have, a, a we- I have a wedding that I just, uh, I just booked. And it's 400 people. Uh, we're charging $125 a person. So you tell me. What does that That's come to? Exactly. 400 so, times So you tell me. What was that? 40? 40? Yeah. You or know what I mean? 400,000. No, no, no. Four, yeah, 40. I'm really terrible. We're, we're, in, the, we're in the 40 <laughs> range. But, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying is the cost of living here is a lot less. True. So why would I go back to L.A.? I love you, L.A. Why would I go back to L.A. when, you know, there's other places to be? Yeah. And you can buy a million dollar home here, right. which would cost twenty million. Well, a buddy in of LA. mine just bought a million dollar house in LA, and it's a two bedroom. Uh, hello, <laughs> hello. Case in point. Yeah, but they do make a lot more money out there. Though, don't uh, they? Yeah, actually, for me, I was doing better in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, working for so a hedge fund owner. You were a, you were a private chef for a hedge, a guy who run, owns a hedge he owns fund. a hedge fund in, so they, uh, in New York. Got or, sorry, in, in this guy's got a lot of money. Yeah. He lives eight, in eight, 18 billion, I think it was, the last of my count. Wow, so he's one of the 1%. He, oh, he is, so, the, he is the 1%. How, <laughs> so I looked through this um, resume of yours here that you know, our producer Graham gave me, and there's all kinds of these incredible jobs you've had. Yeah. What, what I wondered was, why do they come to an end? Um, you know, at some point, I mean, I had a great experience, you know, uh, working for Basam Ghanem, who owned the Gulf Bank of Kuwait, and you're traveling all over the world on a private plane and all that good stuff. But at some point, you want to do something to make your own mark, and not be the guy behind the guy, you know what I mean? So yeah. uh, for me, I just felt that, and I, I, I said to my previous employer that, um, you know, I just need to go off and be the best version of myself that I can be. But you went from Christina to one to you know one of the, to the Kiss. You were working for Kiss. You were the chef for Kiss. Right. Four so, four years with Kiss. Four one year, years. Yeah. Four right. years with Kiss. Tour, touring everywhere, and I, you know, it was great. Right. But so how do these things come to an end? Do you get burned out or do they get sick of the food you cook? Oh, no, 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 no. How do you you end it? I I always, I'll I'll end it myself. And it's it's sometimes. You should uh, tell Rod Stewart, listen, Rod. I'm going to New York. I I tell I said, you you know what? I'm going to New York. I was offered a job in New York and I said I was going to New York. Um, There was a a, a young lady. Hi, Christina. (laughs) <laughs> um, that it was almost like ending a relationship yeah. because I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, I, yeah, it's not for me. 
But so they offer so you more money, like to stay? Yeah. Uh, more money, baby. More money. Uh, uh, like, no, we'll pay you. Yeah. Like you got to stay with yeah. me. Uh, right? Yeah. They don't do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was, yeah, yeah, a few yeah, times. they do it. Yeah. Okay. Did you but, have a manager or anything? No. I mean, it's, at this point, it's where, you know, I mean, when you're hanging out in the, the back, you know, you're hanging out in the back room or the, uh, the VIP room with all these people, you, you meet everyone. So it's pretty much like, oh, they, everyone wants to steal you from the they other do. person. They're all trying to poach you they off each poach other. You. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. So what was it? <laughs> so you must have some pretty good stories about Kiss and Stevie Wonder and all these people and Christina Aguilera that you could really... But well, he won't. Uh, you know, write a book. Uh, yeah, well, I won't write a book. You could be the Omarosa of... Ooh. Well, it's nothing that juicy, cooking. I'm sure. <laughs> but people would snap it up. Everybody wants to know what Christina Aguilera was really like. Or, but the well, thing is, that's a never, professional. Right. Um, yeah, you never work again I, if yeah. you're right. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, Christina is probably one of my one of my favorites, other than Paul, but um, Stanley. So, so you know. Paul Stanley from Kiss is I, one of I, I love Paul like nobody's business. All he's, right. he's an awesome person. What a funny gig. I Cookies love you too, Gene. What do they like to. <laughs> What do you have to do? I mean, they're on the road, or you're at their house. So they it don't was live together like the monkeys or anything. Well, actually, they live down the street from each other. But um, it's uh, so basically, when you're on tour, you're doing like seven months out of the year. So seven months out of the year, I'm traveling around. The rest of the time, uh, you know, I'm in I'm in home. Okay, and that's what do you? So for five months, you're doing nothing. Um, Hanging out. Well, that's when you have time to drink. Yeah, yeah please. That's no. how it works. <laughs> okay, so. Cole, are he you is st- empty. Uh, Cole, are you still calling yourself the punk empress of African rock? Every single day. You still mm. are. I look in the mirror. Yeah, I'm like, t- you're the punk empress of African yeah. rock. You're the punk empress of African rock. <laughs> Isn't that a great title? And then, and then I go out and do my things. Yeah. <laughs> like go to Walmart or whatever. So how's it all going? So I'm, I know you're on WWOZ on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, every you're Tuesday, the, 11 a.m. What time is it? 11 to 2? 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. yeah. I just had Irma Thomas on yesterday. Oh, that was incredible. I'm so sorry. What do you oh, my do? goodness. She, re- like, she resembles my mother. When I first moved here, I saw all these billboards of her, and I would just like have these flashes of like, that's yeah. weird. you look familiar. I was like, Mom? I was like, oh, my God, that's Irma Thomas. Irma Thomas and looks like, like your mom. Yeah, she looks wow. like my mom. Hey, <laughs> look at that. There's a photo of Paul Stanley. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoop! Must be a good photo. I swear, I didn't do that. It was me. That's, oh. that's me and my boy. <laughs> yeah. He looks pretty oh, wow. good, actually, right. without his makeup on. He looks on. great. Yes. Yeah. Is he cinched? He's more handsome. What's that? Is he cinched in the face? Cinched? Oh, you mean, is, do they have work done? No. That's a good thing no, about wearing all that makeup. I guess you don't need to have cinched. any work done. So, <laughs> I'm going to go get cinched tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Are you having work done? Friday. You look great. <laughs> Thanks. I was cinched when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, good. so, Cole, what are, you, what are you doing musically? What's going on? Um, everything. So um, I still have my residency over on French Met the Marini Brass on Saturdays. I'll be at Little Gem for the next couple of months. Um, subbing for Kermit Ruffins in his spot, but also doing some late nights over there. Um, I'm doing Down River Fest. Um, I just did the White Linen party at Old 77. So this is all Cole Williams' band? Or all Cole Williams' band, Cole yeah. Williams band. So it's, it's like a nice call, movement. Do you call that African rock? Yeah, the music we play is African rock. It's all original music. You know, I compose Ooh. it, I write it, I, I live it. I get some of the you best musicians. It. I am the music. Right. And, um, I love that last song I heard. What was that called? I saw on SoundCloud. Is that free? Yes. Yeah, I wrote that with uh, in Paris with a friend of mine ah. in Paris, and that was yeah over okay, that so years ago. Okay, so far we've worked Portugal and Paris oh, into the conversation. Right. Paris. Danita, can you come up with some impressive place you've been? <laughs> well, can you try I did study um, wig making and um, you know, uh, okay, wig uh, dressing in uh, Eastbourne, England, just in 2016. Ooh. So I did go okay. to Paris. They know about wigs over there. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I studied with an old school teacher. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was so amazing. Wig making. Yes. What goes into it's, uh, what is that? It's, How do you the start lace is so thin, it's almost microscopic. Huh. It's um, about the size of the head of a pin, and you tie one hair at a time to each a uh, honeycomb-shaped hole. So wow. it's like a tapestry, like a, what's it called? Like needlepoint. It's like needlepoint. <laughs> With hair. With hair. One <laughs> hair at a time. Don't it's they very have difficult little boys in India or something to do that? They go blind? Well, I'm, I'm sure there's some. I thought that was the, the whole thing. But the best ones come little... out of England and come I'm out sorry, of, you know. Sorry, are we talking about know... lady boys? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actual... Wigs are in now, too. 
Who's, Everybody are they? Wigs. wigs are in. Oh my god, yeah. Is that like, right? Women with hair are wearing wigs. I don't know why. People are just wearing wigs. I must mm-hmm. be really uncomfortable. It up. Right? <laughs> but the have, fun part is uh, no. cutting back. Actually, no. No, you know, I, I, mean, threw, I, threw, I threw the wig away, yeah. Just mm-hmm. if I want to look different, like switch right. it up. Yeah, but you can also cut sense. away the front of the wig and have your own hair in the front, you know, matching color, That's and then I've have got. the other wig. That's what you have. That's what I've got on now. That's <laughs> called, <laughs> is that, isn't that called extensions? <laughs> it's beautiful. No, it's not extensions. It's, it's like a half wig. Half wig. Because you have to sew in the extensions. Half wig. Yeah, extensions are sewn in. Mm -hmm. So, Danita, here you Mm -hmm. are. You're a successful hair person in movies. You've got a resume as long as my arm of all these movies you've worked on here in front of me. Yeah, long time. And you choose to take time off to go and learn how to make a wig. Absolutely. Why? And to learn... Um, Why would you want to do that? To put me a little bit ahead of everyone else. In you the know? wig department. In the wig department. When because you say wigs ahead, is that a pun? Or is it? it is a pun. Hey, look who's but calling. It's... Nicole Kelly is calling us. Nicole. Oh, yeah. Hi, Nicole. Hi. What's she <laughs> up to? <laughs> no, she's in Atlanta. We're going to talk to her later. We're not talking to Nicole? Uh-oh. Okay, bye-bye. It bye. gets deep. Because I All just right. went to Atlanta. <laughs> we you have a conversation. Well, I'm glad you, you dropped that into the conversation. <laughs> Who is Nicole Kelly? Why aren't we talking she's, to her? Um, she's actually one of my oldest friends. Yeah? Yeah, we, um, we started in, in the music business together when I was 18. And um, we've been through, like, so much together. We had the same manager. We had the same vocal coach. And, yeah, like, she's one of the people that's known me the longest, like, through all my transitions. Well, I'm glad we're not talking to her. Why, uh, <laughs> why is she calling? She knows the dirt. Um, she's calling me back because I called her this morning. Ah, okay. I said something told me, let me call Nicole. Just like the spirit. Yeah, like I just it. have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. the feeling touches me. You have me. a lot of those kind of. Mm-hmm. Are you like a. Super, what's the word for it? Spiritual? Person? Intuition. I am, yeah, I have a, Intuition. I'm very intuitive. Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. I'm a bit clairvoyant. Mm-hmm. Are you? Can yeah. you see the future? Um, it doesn't work like that. Oh, what's clairvoyance? Yeah. Is well, it talking to dead people? Or? It's kind of. It's, it works differently for different people. Um, for me, I'm, I sense a lot of things. That's why I'm really careful about What are you sensing about. now? What's going it's on? It's good energy here. Good. I don't sense anything. Okay, all right. Nothing negative. But I can was. always sense when something's off, and I just don't... Well, with the intuition, you don't need a reason why. Right. Like, just to not to feel to good. Just own... You just, like, go with right. the feeling, and then you get the reason later. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's just an anticipation of something that might develop. Because I have this... Gift, which I consider it to be, okay. as well, and it's it's really good. She knows it's, what it, you're thinking. Just, right. You're nervous. I can't read your mind, okay. but, but I can like look deep into too. your eyes and guess. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take much. So, what what sort of feelings do you have about work or about personal stuff or about your kids or you oh, know when someone else is in oh, danger or what? God, my oh, what sort of feelings come to me? Yeah, what sort of stuff? Um, well, dreams are really uh, yeah. telling, I and a lot and too. I've had I had a dream the other night of my son who lives in New York, and he came to me as a little boy in the dream, and he just ran up to me, and it was his old self as a child, <laughs> which he was extremely loving, and you know he gave me the best hug in the world in the dream. But now he's a grown gay man, and he's. Not as, you know, I mean, he's still a sparkly, fabulous person, um, but he doesn't hug me as much. Of course, he lives in Brooklyn. Okay, so, so we're doing a drag show this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what, what he would you, totally be, you know, he'd what be are interested. You, what are you getting at, though? What, what, what's intuitive about that? That just seems like a okay, dream of well, anybody. Okay, um, well, what would be intuitive, you know, the way I would look at it is I would want to uh, reach out to him and remind him of that spirit that he had as a child okay. and remind him... So it's a message. It's a message. Okay. Re- maybe let him know to, you know to open up his heart. And oh. he's about to go to um, Europe. He's going to Paris and Germany. He speaks um, about 15 languages. About 15? Wow. Are there 15 languages? Out? There I, are I can at least. Speak English. I know. How I know. He, Fluently, he is. He has translational what? degrees in four languages, oh my God. Um, and he's, he's not like using a, any of it. He's working he, at a Mexican restaurant well, called Pinata or something. Well, at least he can use Spanish. Huh? That's one language. Spanish, yeah. French, uh, German, um, and it, Italian. But he also speaks Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese. I could go on Portuguese. You, oh my are goodness. you sure that's true? He just tells you that. Mom, no. guess what? I learned Chinese last <laughs> no, night. No, like I took him to the to the Nile, one, the Blue Nile one night. And you know how sometimes the, the, the group there or the attendees are all 
diff- from different areas of the world. And thank you. And he, because um, I do talk to my fans. That's all I do. Uh, and I and I'm turning around. I'm, t- and I'm you know I'm seeing all these different languages being spoken. And I turn around to this Russian guy, and he tells me he's from Russia. And I say, Oh, that's the one language I think my son doesn't know. My son stepped up and started speaking to him in Russian. And I said. Okay. So what's wow. the deal? Is he, handy, is, so. is he some kind of idiot savant? Um, uh, <laughs> or, he, sometimes he's an idiot, but he's definitely a savant when it comes to language. He crazy has, that you can speak Well, years. the thing is, from a babyhood, I taught him, uh, well, my mother and father were deaf. So I taught him sign language. I don't know if that started it. Your mother and father were both deaf. Mm. Wow. wow. How'd they meet, actually? Well, actually, my, I, I take that back. My father was hearing. His mother and father were deaf, but my stepfather was deaf and blind. Does that? It's getting better and better. Hang yeah. on. <laughs> Your grandparents were both deaf? Yes. My father was hearing. His sister was deaf. My mother was deaf from I can't follow this. Are you a disease, up with um, you know, uh, scarlet fever. And she became deaf at nine months old. What? Who? Wow. That's your so mom. I, like I, speak I speak sign language, so speak sign language. Okay. as quickly as I can spell. I, I can spell my name. Could you do this whole show in sign? I could do this entire show in sign language. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I could speak in sign language as quickly. So you can read lips? I can read lips. Oh, that's good to know. Because oh. my mother, yeah. <laughs> Hang my on. mother was great at that. So you were brought up in a so house she, where... She's not clairvoyant. She yeah, just right. read lips. <laughs> 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 Very good. You That's really up, the truth. You were brought up in a house where both your parents were deaf. And the loudest house on the planet. I mean, my mother would cook and pans would be smashing all wow. over the place because... What years was you can't this? can't sleep. Without um, wanting to put an age on you necessarily, but is this the 60s? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what kind of a sort of a wor- world 70s? was it? Where, where, was <laughs> where was this? Where was this? Well, back then, I was always expected to, uh, oh, I always translated for my mother. But so where, if she went where, to get a loan at the bank, I would translate right. the did negotiations. You, did you grow up wow. quickly That's because of that? So did you yeah. have to become an adult? So yes. you knew what was going on from yeah. an early age? Mm-hmm. So I belong to a, an organization called CODA, which is Children of Deaf Adults, and they have had the same experience as I have. And it's really cool because I go there and I feel right at home. Like I'm not on the deaf side and I'm not on the hearing side. I'm in between with a bunch of other people. And are both your kids hearing normal? They are both um, have excellent hearing, except for my older son because he listens on the... Run, headphones. Run. Oh, well, that'll he do it to you. burned his hearing yeah, out. Yeah, well, we've all got that. Yeah. But you, are you, you're not carrying some sort of I gene? Have, I have immaculate hearing. Like, I can hear all ambience, and every time they test my hearing, they, they like, turn the machine off and say, wait a minute, <laughs> you heard that last notch? You know, I do. I have, I don't know why, but I do. Yeah. No, and on my father's this is an side. Bunch. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Isn't it? I don't know. My mother, well, see, lost her hearing through a disease. Scarlet, but my, you say my was scarlet fever. Scarlet fever. But my scarlet fever anyway. It's like a Zero. sore throat with a red rash around your neck. They call the it scarlet fever. The next thing you know, fever. you're deaf. Not Is always. It a virus? But back in the day, di- it's a oh. virus with a Who's high calling? temperature. Oh, it might be Paul. Hold on. One Is it Paul Stanley? Let's from talk Kiss? to Paul. <gasps> Is Hello? it Paul Stanley? You can just put it up to here and then Hello? we can all hear. Just hold it up. To- basement on a ham radio. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What Say, are you doing? I'm in a, I'm in a recording studio. Oh yeah. I, I saw your brother this morning. I know. I, I he told me. He sent me a, a text. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, okay. I told, What's that? I told him uh, you're sending me photos of oysters. That's that's the first time anybody's ever sent me photos of oysters. Oh, that can't be the first time. So when are you coming to visit me in New Orleans? I don't know, but. Uh, you know, I love New Orleans, and I, you know, you're, you're the, the, uh, you're the, the master chef. So, I, I need to come there. I need to definitely make my way back and, uh, come up with you know, get, get some, get me some uh, crawfish and suck heads. And, they- <laughs> <you know. laughs> and then we'll get you some seafood. Say hi to Grant. Grant is actually yeah. uh, the the, uh, the host here. The, the yeah, I don't know if you can hear me though. Can he not hear you? I don't yeah. know. I don't think so. I can so. hear you. Oh, he you can, can hear you. Yeah. Okay, Paul, how's it going? Are you coming to visit us? Uh, you know, I, look, I love New Orleans. We've been, uh, we were kings of Mardi Gras. We were the, um, 
for Endymion. Yeah. I think it was last year, yeah. and uh, I think it's 79 when the, the police strike. So, you know, the, the coolest thing about yeah. New Orleans, other than the food, is that everybody always just finds an excuse to party. You know, it's either Mardi Gras or we're partying because it's leading up to Mardi Gras or we're partying because Mardi Gras just ended. Right. So or, it's all, or it's Wednesday afternoon. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. He said, or it's Wednesday afternoon, yeah. There you go. Yeah. How cool. Are you guys recording? Are they working in the studio? These guys yeah, are always working. Yeah, we're in the studio right now doing some work and uh, mm. always something going on, but... How can I not take a call from you? <laughs> I appreciate you, um, and uh, let's let's uh, touch base soon, yeah? Yeah, I can't wait to uh, come down there, and I'm sure everybody who's uh, who's down frequenting your your establishment is uh, singing your praises. Uh, uh, God bless you, man. I, uh, you know how much I love you. I appreciate you calling. All right, man. You take care. All right. Bye. All right. See you. How about that? Paul, that, was that really Paul Stanley from Kiss or just some guy uh, here? Uh, that was Set Paul. <laughs> well, that's crazy. You can't tell his voice? I yeah. Can pick him, I can pick him out of a lineup. That is yeah. wild. Wow. What do you think about that? I'm so impressed. I know. Me too. I'm speechless. And I'm never <laughs> speechless. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks, oh, Paul. No, not unless I don't like somebody. But, yeah, I'm usually always talking. <laughs> so, how did you, so, Janita, how did you learn to speak talking to speechless? Um, actually, I learned a little later in life, but I You've made up for have it. no problem now. Right. <laughs> but... I think that maybe I might articulate more, articulate more than some people because, you know, it was very important to me to to have a good speaking so, voice. What did your parents do when? I mean, what's a deaf person do about listening to music? They maybe feel the vibrations. They can't listen to it, but they can certainly feel it. Right. My mother used to always buy a car with a great stereo for me. And uh, she let me play my music as loud as Wait, I wanted. How many cars did your mother buy you? My mother, no, her cars. Oh, oh okay, sorry. Her cars yeah. always had a next. Oh. No, she never bought me a car. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to see if that. Paul would want to play something for us because I see you. Um, you bought your tambourine. Yeah, I brought my tambourine. <gasps> cool. Yeah. I can sing a little something. You want to do something? <gasps> yeah, you know, Last time you came here, you bought your bongos. I know. I didn't feel like bringing my bongos because I have to right. lug them like. Because I can't leave them in the heat or else the oh, head they, will burst. And then oh, I have to wow. pick, like, buy a new head in there. Ah, put but it the back tambourine on. travels. Yeah. No problem. What do you write on? Do you write on piano or guitar? Or? I write on piano. Um, sometimes awesome. I start with drums, like, right. like percussion drums. Or sometimes I just write it in my head. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So what are you thinking of uh, playing or accompanying yourself on tambourine? You know, I've been uh, singing a lot of uh, spiritual songs in my set so I've been like doing this medley of like my original tunes and um, some spiritual music that I grew up with in the church so um, let me see if you like some Mahalia Jackson yeah oh, okay. oh yeah soon we'll be done trouble Troubles of the world, oh, and troubles of the world, oh, soon it will be done. Troubles of the world. 
sing it one more time. I'm going home, home to leave, leave with my, my God. Wow, beautiful. Wow. So what are you performing? Oh, <laughs> Well, I'll be singing all over. What will well, you be singing, that, girl? This, <laughs> this Saturday, I'll be at the Little Gem Saloon at 7.30 p.m. So Saloon. I'm at either Little Gem Saloon or Marini Brasserie, or I'm at, I'm at the Rue Carre every first Friday. That's like that outdoor venue on Aretha yeah. Castle. Oh, yeah. cool. So uh-huh. I call it African Rock Church. It's African Rock Music, but it's really music to inspire, um, music to uplift. And we just have church. Okay. You know, have your drinks. Question. Yes, please. Gym like emerald? Gem. Gem. Oh, gem, like gem, gem, like working out. Gem, G-E-M, like an emerald. Okay, no, gem. Copy that. Got it's it. on, what is it, on Poitras and something? Yeah, it's on Poitras, yeah. off of... Uh, it's a great little bar. It's not really? a little, actually. It's, yeah, it's right great. in the CBD. Are you upstairs in that room? Upstairs? I'll be downstairs in the sexy room. It's cool. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. It's a room you and girls don't be the spot. sexy room, don't you? Yeah. So that's it's always sexy. So those lyrics, I'm going home to live with God, that's about dying, basically. You know, I don't see it like like dying. You know, what do you I think. think of? I, well, I think, you know, we die many times in this life. You know, mm-hmm. we, like we transition into different careers. Mm-hmm. You know, different life paths. Like that's a death, right? You like you leave the old and you get something new. Christina Aguilera to kiss, <laughs> for example. Right to New Orleans. Right. Like, right. and then I, you know, when I'm singing it live, I sing going home to live with God, going going home to live with my man. You know, yeah. it's it's like it's really all one and the same. You know, you build a relationship with people, so it's like whatever God, whatever you, God you choose to, to to worship, whatever spirit you choose to worship, whatever name you call him, her, it. You know, we all are like pulled by something higher. So I resp- I try to respect that in the music. Okay. Yeah. Is that part of your intuition as well? Your spiritual. I'm sure. Yeah, I grew up in the church, cute? but I was what, never religious. What does that mean? You grew up. How can you? How is that possible? So I had my for? bed. Yeah, I had a bed in the, the church. The <laughs> <laughs> I went to church like three days a week. Um, yeah, well, I went you, to church but if you weren't religious, Wednesday. So you, didn't, you didn't believe any of it. My, my family's religious. And what did you think? I thought it was a load of shit. I thought it was boring. <laughs> I thought I was wasting my time. I had to get dressed up for no reason. Sit there, yeah. be quiet, read things three, I didn't understand. Three days and, a week. And yeah, Wednesday night prayer meeting. Mm-hmm. We worshipped on Saturday, so we celebrated the Sabbath. What was that? Seventh Day Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. Jehovah Witness. Seventh Day. Seventh Day. Seventh day. Yeah. What do they? Then, what do they believe in? Um, I call it like the Christian Jews, like the, the, the dietary <laughs> laws. Jew. You know, so yeah. I couldn't eat pork, right? web things with webbed feet. You know, like my mother still says, "Oh my God, you're eating shrimp." Like she doesn't eat seafood. Shrimp doesn't have any feet. Yeah, but no shelled fish. Right. You, right. Or do so. they have feet? Are they little feet, those things? <laughs> they call them like the... Um, the shellfish. The I shellfish are like the, the, the vermin of the, of the underwater. Bottom feeders. The bottom oh, feeders, yeah. yeah. Well, kosher, you can only eat fish with scales. Right, so that's what we... So it's the same as the Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah, yeah. Kosher. And then like Friday so night to Saturday night. It's the same thing. Sabbath is Saturday, like yeah. Judaism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so I couldn't do anything secular. On Saturday. On Friday night. On Friday night. Like, no secular right. phone conversations. Like, my secular friends, I couldn't talk to them. Oh, wow. It had to be all about, like, a church. Like, from See, zero the jo- to... The joy of being Roman Catholic. 18. You know, you I, grew up church. I went to church once a month. And, uh, <laughs> we were animals. We did anything we wanted to do. <laughs> did you have to dress up? I had to dress up. We it never dressed thing, up to like, go to church. I wore, like, flip-flops and some shorts. Did Whoa. you? In church? Yeah. Really? Oh, my God. Me? They would, you would get so many looks oh, yeah. that they would, look, they would stare you out of the church. You'd be <laughs> so, like, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> was there ever a point when you were a child that you believed it and it gave you some sort of comfort or you just always hated it? It's not that I hated it. I just didn't be, I don't believe in things to be so organized. I don't believe right. it's this mm-hmm. spiritual thing that they're teaching me on one hand, but on the other hand, there are all these rules and they're telling me how to believe in God mm-hmm. and they're not letting me build this relationship that they say I'm supposed to have with God. So I just didn't believe them. I thought, like, most of the people were full of crap. Right. I felt like they were phonies, you know, Is that they were like... Is your mom still in it? Yeah, she's still in it. My grandmother, she learned to read by reading the Bible. So, like, church is really big in my family. And it took a long time for them to understand, like, this way of life, that, like, I right. choose my church. So hmm. I think now they understand, like, they know I'm a good person. 
but for years, many years, it was like, why do you have these tattoos? Like, my uncle, like, didn't invite me to his wedding at first. Because of the tattoos? He just doesn't understand me, you know? And so it's like, you know, he would ask me, so why do you have tattoos? Well, what's your answer? What is the answer to that? Because I feel like it. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's fair enough. Well, Shut it go. down. What do they say? What does that one say on your chest? Well, this is um, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem. To remind seize me to the day. seize the day. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I have the Ankh mm-hmm. right here. What is that like? Some, and I got this when I was on tour. So, like, I like going on tour and getting tattoos. Like, an, like a so, sailor. <laughs> yeah. So, I would think I was in Mississippi. Either Mississippi. No, I was in Memphis. After the show, got this. Had some really? Jameson, yeah. So you go after a show, you come because you, there was a tattoo parlor in the in the right. event space. This so is then right I went in the middle of for people who can't see this. This is on your chest, yeah, right in the middle of your breast. Like it's pretty big as well. How big yeah. is that? Like a six inches? No, it's not that big. Oh. That's pretty big. It's like maybe three <laughs> inches. Call that six uh, inches. That's, that's what Roni's doing. That's, what I, call, the hotel. that's um, what I call six inches. I think my back is like six inches. In, <laughs> that's pretty, in entirety. That's a pretty big tattoo My back is six inches. That's well, something I like did, about an inch or something. Well. They just did that impetuously after a show one night in Memphis. Mm-hmm. I told them what I wanted. So right I, there. Yeah. In the middle of each mm-hmm. Wow. It hurt like hell. Mm. Yeah. And I have um, like La Revolution. La oh, my for, um, revolution. The revolution. Because I like the La way they say revolution. it in French. You know, it makes you feel like you're really going to get up and do something. La Revolution. Uh, we, right. Where, well, like, in America, speak it's like, and and you have like I speak a little French. Hand, no? I just see, like, a. What's this? Oh, oh I'm yeah. a Libra. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You're a Libra. What is it? I scales? Just, the one. scales. This is. What you got? Uh, what have you got? Is it a dragonfly? Like a it's dragonfly. a dragonfly. And this scar right here is the curling iron burn from when I Whoa. did uh, the B-52s. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, right B- before a concert, um, I was doing her hair, but I didn't want her to know that I had just burned wow. Oh, my God. Ooh. So I didn't so say anything, Kate so Pitt? it became a, like a, hmm? You did Kate Pearson's hair? You did that Cindy. Um, it's the blonde, Cindy. Cindy yeah. Wilson. Cindy. Cindy Wilson. So I, I did all these tiny little curls all over her, but I did Kate oh. before. I, I worked with them maybe three times. Yeah. When they, whenever they came to town, because Southern girls know how to tease hair. Baby. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I like Southern girls. Does Wait. Fred's voice sound like that in real life? That's his name, right, Fred? Fred Schneider or something. Yeah. Can you? Like can you say oh, oh, I only work with much, the girls. It's amazing how much we you know about the B-52. Oh. Oh, I just googled that. Fred it's is really cool, um, but I only work <laughs> with the women. <laughs> 1991, baby, that was the. Uh, he doesn't the have, um, you know, I he does his own hair. <laughs> and you've done a lot of pretty amazing, impressive stuff here on this list. Look at all these movies. Mm. You did Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, Imagination oh. Movers, TV series, mm. Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons. Yes. Oh. Ooh. Yes. So what do you Excellent. do on these things? Do you, are you? Are there a bunch of hairdressers? Sometimes, like on or the curious case of Benjamin Button, I was like the fourth, you know, position hairdresser. And what I would do is uh, I would make sure that all of the background hair, and we used many wigs on that show because it was it went through from 1915 uh, all the way up to 2004. So right. you've got to be able to do every period of look. And so we used was, a lot of wigs that was for the earlier. Before you were a wig expert, like you are now. That's where I began to become a wig expert. Okay. I, <laughs> so you have people, thank you. Because we've all been to the hairdresser. You sit in the hairdresser, and people tell you all sorts of stuff at the hairdresser. Do you do mm. a lot of counselling? If needed, you know we. But is it the same thing on a movie where people? Well, tell on a you movie, their life story? Um, my you know what I uh, feel like needs to happen inside of a trailer is that the actor should feel relaxed enough to run their lines in their head to to not you know if they don't want to talk they don't right, have to talk right. uh, you or that. yeah so it's sometimes like hairdressers want you to talk to them or mm-hmm. makeup artists and i don't feel like talking no. there's a way to you know to pick up the cue you know you you just you know start to work with them maybe talk about what you're about to do and then from there you take your cue from the person you know, this make is them how feel you get comfortable. Over and, over. and you know, honestly, <laughs> like if they're not talking to you, sometimes it's really because they trust you. Because yeah. I know, if, like if I'm talking my hairdresser mm-hmm. or my makeup artist's hair, head off, mm-hmm. I'm trying to see what they're doing. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I, like I trust right. you, I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. So like, when you do a movie, mm-hmm. how do you know what someone's hair is supposed to look like? Do you make that up? Well, no. Do you contribute um, that, or does it, the director tell you that? Or? The director, you confer with the director, um, the actor, you, the story, the period. It all depends on you know what it's about. Yeah, but yeah. whose decision? Do you have a creative input into it? Oh, absolutely. Do you say, I think, absolutely. you know what, we look good on this yeah. character? So I you can, have to read I can the script. Say, look, oh, yeah, I read the script. I break it down. I break it down character by character. 
you know, what is the scene? What have they been doing? Were they running? Are they sweating? You know, all of those things. Should their hair be relaxed or should it be perfectly curled? You know. Okay, so where are we going next with hair fashion? Because now everyone's wearing this look like you, everyone's like got this hair. Like the two of us have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with it shaved on the size, side yeah. and long on top. How, How long have you well? had yours? Five years ago, nobody was wearing that. So I've had this for ten years. You've got a I've sort been of shaving my, my head the have size you? of my head. Yeah. So I you're way it. ahead of that. Way yeah. ahead. So, so I'm confused. So it went, it went you're, from... You're shaved on the side? Just yeah, on one side? Let's take a look. Well, I'm actually growing back. So I used to shave both sides. Well, you're the person to ask if you've been doing this for 10 years. What are you doing next? That's no, whatever the spirit oh, tells me. Yeah. So, like, I have the blonde and <gasps> I then... I love right. it. Wait. So, you Beautiful. do blonde underneath and then one, side, one whole side is blonde. Yeah, because blondes do have more short. fun, but I just well, found more hair to my... Yeah. So, I just do a little <laughs> tease and then... The left-hand side of your hair is more Yeah, fun. if I do something kind of silly, it's like, oh, I'm blonde. <laughs> <laughs> just to blonde me, like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't know I could use that excuse. Because oh, I'm a new blonde. blonde. I'm a newbie blonde. I've only been blonde just, for about seven months. Have you? What did you Wait, do before? Well, you had blue before. as well on your hair. Oh, I've had the blue, blue for green? ten years. Wait a minute. Oh, you were way ahead on that So, she's so ahead. Yeah. Brown. We're like trendsetters at this table. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, where are we going next after the head shaving on the side look? What's the next look that's coming in? I have to say that it's it's up to each person. Um, no, but it's not because suddenly we're all set. doing the same. You know, it's going to be a wash like, and set. I know, I know where <laughs> I'm going. Oh, wash and set would be is that awesome come back? because that's gorgeous. Huh. Washing bet you, and setting I'm not sure is. I bet you six set months is. a wash yeah. and set. That's your wash mother's hair style. Your mother's right. hairstyle. When that's your mother when went to the like hair pin curls and put the rollers in. Pin curls. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if you see this. This is a pin curl right here. All right. This is what they're doing. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, yeah. right? Okay. So they would, you know, they would take the curl, make the curl, and then pin it. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it comes out like that. Ah, I used to have my hair like that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to take tissue, like to roll my hair. Yeah. Like if I didn't have rollers on the road, mm-hmm. I'd take like some paper towel and then like. See, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if people went back to, you know, pin curling their hair or, you know, that would be re- very cool. It's like really my extreme world. right now, like all yeah. the lime green. Everybody's like trying to outdo mm-hmm. each other, like with the cool with the factor colors. and the, cool the colors. Hmm. And Some I feel of like them are fails. Ultimate <laughs> fails. Some of them are fails. Well, it has to be authentic, you know? It's like yeah. you can tell like who feels it inside mm-hmm. and who's just like doing it just to be cool. No. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to go back to roller sets. <laughs> Do you really believe I that, or are you that. just kidding? Me? No, I totally believe that. that. I totally and I can't it. wait so that I can like have my hairstyle back. Because yeah. it went from like, why are you doing that to your hair, to like, well, that's really right. cool. Like, how right. did you do that? Uh, yeah. I was like, oh god. So what's your? <laughs> what would your natural hair look like if you didn't have shaved on the side and the? It's really like curly and afro-y. It's and down so would here. Would you shrinks. go back to that? I don't, it's a lot of maintenance, to be honest. Like, Is I don't it? feel like right. combing my hair every day. It would take about, like, 20 minutes yeah. to do my hair right, per day. Right. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of like to get up and go. So it's not good for you? No, it's not good for me. Set the... I'm kind of huh. used to, like, I'm still, like, on tour, even though I'm not on tour. Like, mm-hmm. I don't keep a full fridge. Once you're a roadie, you're always a roadie. Yeah, I, yeah my <laughs> fridge is never full. Like, I like to have my hairstyle in ways that I can just, like, kind of mm-hmm. go through, like, you know, a week or two weeks and not have to do it. Where are you living? In New Orleans? Yes. But what part of the city, what part of the city are you in? I'm in the 7th Ward. What does that mean? That's uh, near that's near downtown. That's near St. Claude. That's near St. Bernard. That's near... Oh, so um, you're in the CBD, right? Mm-mm. Okay. No? Downtown. So I'm closer to the quarter, like Elysian Fields. 7th mm-hmm. Ward. I never have ward. been able to figure out. Closer that's near Treme. I get where, very confused with the down downtown. Me too. I, I get, where are you living? Uh, so hmm. I am... Um, what is that? I mean, like almost just outside of the quarter. So it's like, uh, what, 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 yeah. what bar do I? What can, bar can I throw a stone What's the at? Closest bar? <laughs> uh, I'm bar? like off a, a lesion, oh, okay. right? So you're right es- up. Es- es- Esplanade. So you're, you're in the like, es- Yeah, you're yeah. in the Marin. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so you're like right next to the seventh ward. Right. You're not your that far cute little hair, mm-hmm. Danita. This is See, I like pretty that. You like it? <laughs> we love it. So you do your own hair, obviously. I assume do you? You know, to a certain degree. That would be awesome if I could do my my own hair well. <laughs> Who does your hair? Well, I, f- I finally found someone. Mm-hmm. So I went to this guy. When I first moved out here. Do, it. I, can, do you do a faux hawk? I, I do. I went. When I first moved to town, I went to get my hair cut at this place. And I remember sitting there. And all of a sudden, I thought the barber went to the bathroom. He didn't go to the bathroom. The guy walked outside to go grab something to eat around the corner. Then he came uh-huh. back. Well, while you're sitting in the chair. While I'm sitting in the chair. He came back and sat in front of me eating his lunch. While I'm still waiting, and I said, you know what, I can't do this, I gotta go. 
Welcome to That's New Orleans. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Even for New Orleans. I got my hair braided weird. by like in Harlem by the African uh, hair braiders. Like yeah. they would all take break at the same time. And then sometimes, like they would have like be, like eat their fish and then like start braiding yeah, their hair. You, and it's just you, you got to give a, give a brother a heads up because I'm not patient like that. I'm telling you right now. If you go into a place weird. you want to be waited exactly. on. Hello. Not, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's wanna, just a wanna, professional. You want to drop some names? You want to name drop? Where did, what establishment did you go to? <laughs> oh, hell to the no. Oh, hell to the no. I won't even say. <laughs> But it was bad, so I never went back. The name but is Hell to the Nut. Hell to the Nut. <laughs> okay, so That's the name of it. Janita, do you have a movie coming out that we can all go and see and say, oh, we know the person who did the hair? Okay, well, I, I have a film coming out at the Toronto Film Festival called Out of Blue with Patricia Clarkson, our, you know, our native love. Yes. yes. Is she related we filmed to Kelly it here. Clarkson? I don't know who that was. <laughs> So, Jackie Clark's, Clarkson, who is a uh, political figure here, oh. or was, and, and she's uh, she's the mother of Patricia Clarkson. Oh. Um, but I am starting a movie next week. I go to Pittsburgh to work on a film uh, about the sl- a slice of life of Fred Rogers' life, Mr. Rogers. And, You're working and, on the Mr. Uh, Rogers movie. I am, and, yeah. and and Mr. Rogers is being played by Tom Hanks, so it's oh, wow. yeah, it's gonna going be to be very deal. fun. <laughs> it, well, the thing about it is that it's right. it's it's about kindness. So. And it's called you know, kindness. It's called the neighborhood, something or other. I'm ready to see. No, that. it's called. You are my friend. Oh, you are my friend. That, that can be creepy. That's very <laughs> creepy. <laughs> and then I like, like your expression, Carl. Like you're going to throw up there for a minute. Yeah, and then yeah. like invite you into the no, car. You, you are my, my friend. friend. Get into my car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what, would you like some candy? <laughs> I've, I've offered w- that before. I thought there was. A, was Do you want to wear my cardigan? Is it the documentary Van down by the, the neighborhood river? thing hmm? or something? Maybe there's a documentary about him called. There is. There is. That's uh, a different thing altogether. Okay. In the, so in, this is a Mr. Rogers biopic. No, it is not a biopic. What is it? It is a slice of what his kindness did for someone, and that's all I can tell you. Can I give a tidbit okay. of a backstory here? Okay. Yep. So uh, in Hollywood, there's this thing called the Playboy Jazz Fest. I yes. want to go. And it was awesome. At the Hollywood so, Bowl. At the Hollywood Bowl. And the first time I ever went, my, I went with my mother. Uh, we had a, a She group. was a bunny? Well, no. She's a, she's a talent manager in Los Angeles. Ah. Uh, so she goes to a lot of you know, premieres and different things like that. So right. we, we went to the Playboy Jazz Fest, and it was on stage, Bill Cosby. And uh, wait a minute, the story gets better. Uh, it was Bill Cosby and Hugh Hefner. And I said to my mother, I said, I don't understand why Hugh Hefner and Bill Cosby are like friends. <coughs> um, but j- to, to go back, uh, one of Bill Cosby's best friends, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, my dear. One of Bill Cosby's best, best friends, friends was Mr. Yeah, Rogers. Was Mr. Really? Rogers. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, that's an interesting... It is. A tidbit to wrap up on. He never hung out with Sidney Poitier. It Somebody was just walked over here yeah. out of from the bar and brought you a beer. Do you know that? I never ask questions when people bring me drinks. Interesting thing, wasn't it? <laughs> did you see that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. How did, how did that person even know you wanted I, a beer? I, 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 I always, I always want a shit. beer. You text me. <laughs> Do you get bought a beer every day at the same time? <laughs> you guys, we're going to have to get the it's hell sweet. out of here. This has been uh, awesome. This, I, this I, hour, like, this has been a very quick hour. A joy meeting both all of you. All I know. Of you. Can we do like an alumni? Um, you want to come back? It's New Orleans with like all three sure. of us. Sure. Yeah. You want to come back? Where are you now? Like Where are you one now? year from today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pinky swear. Let's do it. There you go. August, Pinky swear. Definitely. Pinky swear. Oh, okay. August. Oh my God. Hang on. I go do it. August twenty nine. I feel like we're Katrina. One year with the devil. Oh, it's a Katrina anniversary. <laughs> oh, so the worst day of the year. It was. Was it yesterday okay. or today? Wait, what's today? Today. Today. Oh, today. today. 29th. 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 Trust 29th. me, I know. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's the wow. absolute worst day of the year. I'm glad wow. I got to and spend it with you guys, birthday. actually. Oh, that's right. I know. It's been a horrible memory yeah. for most no, people. we don't want to yeah. Hey, listen, just yeah, before we get out of here, I'll just tell you one thing. Happy Hours brought to us today by Strategic Resumes. If you want to sharpen up your resume or your LinkedIn profile, if you're looking for a job and you need a hand, Get in touch with Grant Cooper at Strategic Resumes. And if you want to get out of town, this is good for all three of you guys. Mm -hmm. If you want to get away, you can start your search by checking in with Travel Central and Metairie. It's kind of like going on kayak or Expedia, except it's someone else doing it for you. Totally cool. It's like a rich person. I'm in hospitality, so there is no time for me to get away. I'm I'm always working. Oh, you uh, were in I can Portugal. in between projects. Yeah, I okay. So before this all check started. it out with Travel Central and Mary. If you're looking for a full uh, swimsuit or a cover-up or oh. yoga clothes 
or lingerie, yeah. check out Basics Swim and Gym and Basics underneath mm -hmm. the lingerie store on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. And Ooh. thank you too to Hangover Destroyer, who are the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. You can go to hdestroyer.com and write happy hour on the coupon code, and you too can get 30% off of your first order. Oh, heck Hangover yeah. Destroyer. Yes. Might need it one and day, seize you the never door. Know. And thank you to the Positive Vibrations Foundation. Thank who you, create, Positive Vibrations. Yes, and encourage love, community through the development and preservation of arts, music, culture, and heritage. If you'd like to be a part of our Patreon family, go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can be a part of our Happy Hour family and get all sorts of incredible things, including being invited on the show. I could be a awesome. Patreon. You could do oh, it. And I just want to plug ColeWilliamsMusic.com. Yeah. ColeWilliamsMusic.com. We'll okay, have a link hold, to that. Hold on. i got to get a shameless yes, plug also. Okay. So this Saturday at the Pythian Market and crew, mm -hmm. uh, we are having a drag show brunch. And we it's, it's Decadence awesome. Weekend. Oh, yes. Decadence. Every, every, yes. Everyone come on down See, and enjoy. Down, it's always something. Yeah. That's right. It's always mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay, that's at the Pythian Market. Market we can find. Mm -hmm. Can we go and see Chef Marlon Alexander? And He's down there himself. Come see me at Little Gem Saloon at 7.30. Okay. So go to Pythian Market. Cole Williams and the Cole Williams Band. Come check me. Yeah. And I'm going and your place yes. first, and then your place. It's called we just gonna make a Labor Day Caravan weekend. of Love, and we can all make Caravan it happen. Caravan of Love. Caravan of Love. <laughs> so thank you very much, <laughs> Chef Marlon Alexander, Cole Williams, and Danita <laughs> Miller-Sather. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. For being here, that's been Happy Hour for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. Our music producers are Christian Unruh and Monique Pyle. Thomas Walsh is our technical director. Asher Griffith is the Facebook Live director who put this whole thing on Facebook Live, where if you haven't seen it, you can go see it on our It's New Orleans Facebook page. Andrew Searock is our fact checker and social media connector. And the theme music that you're currently listening to was written by and is being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show, you can drop us a line. Our address is on our website, itsneworleans.com, where you can check out many other hours of Happy Hour that we've made previous to this one, as well as other shows we make here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Rusciutti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker, and our award-winning podcast about death called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from the show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Facebook page. These photos were taken today by Jill LaFleur. You can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, thanks for subscribing to us. Take a moment if you've got one to rate and review us. That helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street in Uptown New Orleans. Happy Hours, a production of I Know Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, who I think will be back here next week. And if you're looking for him in the meantime, he might be in a town near you. Check him out at andrewduhon.com and everyone else around the table here at Wayfair and back at our office in I Know Broadcasting. I'm Grant Morris. Thanks so much for joining Happy us. We'll see you back here next week for more Happy Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's consider the secret life of the innermost nesting doll. Living most of her life in the dark inside the other nesting dolls, she has plenty of time to think, if she could. Sadly, she has no brain. However, when an innermost nesting doll hears that Geico not only saves people money, but also has been providing great service for over 75 years, she thinks it's obvious you should switch. Because yes, switching to Geico is a no-brainer. Pity the innermost nesting doll and her lot in life.